You guys want me to hey, snack thanks. my food at the beginning of the podcast again? Uh, classic. Who the fuck? You have a snack before we record every time. It's literally been the last podcast and this one. That's and, the only time I've And ever the done. other 34, I don't know how many podcasts we've done. No. Yeah, every I've time. I've never had every one time. on this podcast. Every time. We can literally have it all on video. We can go back and look. Uh, Cody cuts it out usually, but it happens, everyone. Just so you know, Ryan is always <laughs> snacking when he's trying to do an Christ. audio medium. Well, I got to I gotta keep up with this metabolism of mine. You know, Todd, that's what happens raging. when you are ex- you exercise and... I exercise every single day. Um, also, just got the new superintendent position here at You Betcha. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna say. Also, I just got the new Super Nintendo. I thought that too. I was like, "Dang, I'm really interested." Well, where's that? Is no, it a reboot? It no, the su- superintendent of the you betcha lawn. Don't act like you don't position. love it. I do love it. That's okay. why I got the position. It sounded like you were complaining. No. Okay. No, absolutely not. Ryan mows the lawn and he loves it. Yeah, if you guys ever get a chance, I'll maybe post a picture of it. <laughs> if you ever get the chance, mow the lawn. No, if you ever get a chance, come, <laughs> come and take a look. But we, also, we don't want a ton of people coming here. We kind of want. It. We like to stay kind of under the radar where we're at here. Yeah, uh, we're. I'll, I'll take a picture. I'll post it. You know what we should do? You have a drone, don't you, Cody? I do. I just found it too. So How did you lose it? I thought someone stole it. So really? We can we can th- throw that baby up in the air. Yes. I'll lay in in the grass, and you guys yes. can see. It looks immaculate. Oh, immaculate. Ryan, hear me out. Right after this, I'm going home grabbing that drone. Deal, because it's freshly mowed. Some photos. And I just edged and uh, trimmed everything. So. Oh, that'll be beautiful. Yeah, we're going to get some photos. There's lots of photos. Uh, we're going to do chipping contests in it. What a lot of people don't know is uh, you might peg me as the lawn expert, but there's one person in this company who may have more experience than I do. Lane. Do you guys know who it is? I'm going to say Joe. He's sitting right next to me. Oh, yeah, I forgot you used hey. to mow lawns. Tyler <laughs> ran a business, baby. Tyler owned his own lawn mowing company, like 100 clients. We're millions of millions of clients. I thought you were going to say dollars. I'm like, you're so, you're lying I made, so hard. I made billions, dude. No, you billions. didn't. This is a job is just a hobby to me. I could retire. <laughs> but I always say, I don't think I could have my own lawn mowing company because then I wouldn't take as much pride. I didn't in, give a shit about my own lawn yeah. at all. At that point, you're just burnt out. It's yeah. like a car mechanic that like doesn't want to ever work on their own cars. Exactly. I always think it's funny when you see these cars listed online. It'll say like mechanic special, mechanic owned. I'm like that thing is a that's piece a derogatory of mark. To, that, that's uh, a piece of junk. If they, yeah. if they're selling it right now, they're not willing to fix whatever is wrong with it. Yeah, that's true. I get it. They pipe that the wrong f- way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. So. Okay, they cheated on that. They fluffed their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. Uh, Ryan, how you feeling? You hung over any at all still? Oh, I thought you meant for next Monday. Last weekend's completely <laughs> behind me. Um, <sighs> to say I haven't thought a lot about this next Monday is a complete lie. <laughs> Do you think about it every night? Well, I, I, I'm trying to... So... <sighs> Hey, Never oh. did I think that I would be golfing competitively. Tyler, before we get into that, though. We have big, big news. Big, big, big podcast news. Guys, we got a sponsor. We are presented by Brio. 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 Guys. Ryan's got an ad read for us. Let's go, baby. Our first ad read ever. Our first real ad read. I'm so excited. <laughs> you want to keep talking? No, go, go. Sorry. Guys, <laughs> Brio is now the official sponsor of the Double Bogey Show. God damn. Wow, that's crazy. Feels good. I have um, goosebumps. Yeah. Brio, smokeless fire pit. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll tell mm-hmm. you what, you go, you go out and you golf around 18 with your buddies. You can't just end it there. You know, the wife calls you home. She's like, she's begging you to get your ass home because you said you'd been home two hours ago. Uh, well, hey, new move here. Bring the boys over to your house. You got a brand new smokeless right, fire pit dude, in the yard. With the no smoke, you don't have to worry about your golf clothes smelling like shit when you're done. You also don't have to worry about propane smell of the smoke because i'll tell you what there's a complete difference between propane and actual wood fire i'm a big time wood fire guy because you know you like the smell of it at the moment yes the next day you don't like the smell of it well that and you can just make you can make s'mores right off the cuff that's true too you know s'mores on the oven s'mores in a uh, propane fireplace it's just not the same so guys Brio is your next move to throw out on your back door patio. Dude, and you can cook on that shit. Do you know Matt Wolf is? Matthew, of course I know Matthew Not Matt Wolf. Wolf. Fuck, what's his name? <laughs> the over the fire cooking guy on TikTok. Oh, I don't I'm, no, I, I don't, don't know. know. His shit's cool. Go f- 
We're not supposed to plug him, but I'm going to plug him. Find this, find the over the fire cooking guy on TikTok. He cooks on a brio all the time. Like he cooks right on it in the open flame and it's cool as shit. So you can cook on it too. Yeah. Um, um, if you can't have a glizzy after the turn, have a glizzy after the 18 yeah. on a brio. Yep. So guys head over to Brio. I believe it's, and this is so bad of us, but we don't even have an ad read in front of us yet. Yeah. We found out about this like two days ago and we couldn't be more stoked. Yeah. So, uh, Cody, is it Brio.com? Cody's on his phone again. Classic. He's looking at Brio.com. I'm looking at Brio.com. No, you weren't. Oh, uh, we have to fill what Cody Googles our own presenting sponsor. <laughs> It I'm is pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's just Brio.com. <laughs> also, they have a sick logo. I do really like their logo. It's like a bunch of hexagon flames. We will have a sign with it next podcast. Yeah. Um, great time to be get a presenting sponsor because you're going to be in the Pine to Palm. We're super pumped about it. Cody, where are we at on Maddie Pool teaching me how to caddy? Brio.co. www.breeo.co. Go get yourself a smokeless fire pit. Guys, these things are absolutely elite. If you think that... Uh, you know, just, just throwing like an aluminum bowl in the back and thinking that that's going to do as a fire pit, Wrong. not going to brio.com. Go check it out. And thank you to Brio for being the first ever presenting sponsor love you. of the double bogey show. Tyler Monday's right around the corner. Dude, it is right around the corner. And uh, I just got the official news while you were in the car coming back from Missouri yesterday that caddies are allowed. Damn right. They were allowed. They heard the Beautiful. podcast. Like, we're not going to be able to keep this guy off. We better just allow caddies. So now your ass is on the chopping block. If I lose in the first round, it's your fault. No, it's not. I'm not swinging the club. You're telling me what to I about. literally have nothing to lose. <laughs> no, because I. No, I, that's not the great. That's uh -huh. not the right way to look at it because we uh, are a team. Now. Unless you hit it short or long, it's not my fault. Correct. If you hit it left <laughs> or right, 100% your fault, not mine. But if I hit it pier and I hit it long, then it's my fault for sure. Yes. Without a doubt. And I'm going to be hitting some pier shots. Yeah, speaking, of, speaking of pier shots, before we d dive too deep into Pine and Palm, Tyler, can you explain to the audience <sighs> last Friday what was going on it's in the tee box with me? It's tough to put it into words, Ryan, uh, but if I could just sum it up in a real short, short sentence, I would say that you were hitting absolute fatty daddy piss missiles off the tee box going at least three honey. <laughs> Um, at least 330. Uh, you had a couple, maybe you hit 330 downhill, but I'll give you 350. Not downhill. I'll give you 315 every time. Tyler, <laughs> hole number one on the set. So the, the course that we played, we played at Osage National. New hat. Uh, that's got to be my Can't buy these course. on our site, but they're cool. So, of course, I had to get a hat in the pro shop. Um, so they have three nine-hole courses, very mm -hmm. similar to Purim. Mm -hmm. We played our first nine, and then we got to the second nine. Oh, that, that first hole... As Miles and his group were walking off the tee, that that hole from the blacks was three fifty, and I f I flew the fringe. Yeah, and we were like joking, like, "Oh, they're off the green. You can go." And then we started to yell four because you were a little bit left. Well, I also yelled four just uh, just to like kind of scare him a little bit, and then I knew the shot was gonna be was gonna be tight. Yeah, right off the tee box, and it was actually pretty damn close to him. And it it bounced and rolled. Like right in line with the, like right to the side of the pin. Yep. Um, can we also talk about the fact that uh, you did that pretty much every, there was like, I think maybe two or three times where we didn't use your drive because you shanked it. But oh, the God. rest of them were yeah, absolute yeah. bombs. Um, we didn't use a single club lower than a seven or higher than a, what do you call it? Lower or higher than a seven? Because it's higher degrees, but lower number. We didn't, use it. we didn't use anything four through seven the entire day. So because of the distance of the course or what? No, because Ryan was hitting absolute fatty daddy piss missiles off the tee box going at least three honey. Really? <laughs> no, at least 330. Uh, we were uh, honest to God, we used three clubs on almost every hole. We used our drivers, we used our wedges, and then we used our putters. So I figured it out. 16 of the 18 holes, we went driver wedge. Yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> I... I'm That's playing great. good golf right now, Tyler. Yeah, so carry that shit, baby. That's what I'm saying. Um, also, I play pretty our... good too, but you hitting all... Of, you usually don't hit every single one straight like you did. Yeah. I hit nine fairways in a row. Yeah. Uh, two, two Like like 210, 220 Yeah, maybe. with that little three, four hybrid I have. That's So nice. Tyler would always tee off first. And again, we're playing four-man scramble. So it's me, Tyler, and two guys from the distributor down we, in Missouri. We're with Nolan and Brian. I know they're listening. Yep. And then it was Miles and Russ... 
uh, playing with Walsh and, and Matt. Matt. Matt almost had a heat stroke. I hope you're doing okay, Matt. Yeah. So <laughs> he was it, dying. It was four v four, right? And I couldn't be more of a fan. I couldn't be. I couldn't be more of a fan of four man scrambles. That was so much fun. It is unbelievable how much fun mm-hmm. they are, and he, like. Yeah, it, it kind of sucks like not being able to play your own ball in some situations, but at the same time... Well, when you play your drive every time. I mean, yeah. Uh, four-man scrambles is where it's at, man. That was a blast. You even just got to like just get eight guys to go golfing, whether it's like an actual event or not. Uh-huh. Just get eight guys, two tee times, go 4 v four. It's mm-hmm. unbelievable. It was fun, and the course was sweet, too. The course was probably the nicest course I've played at o- Osage uh, National. I would agree with that. Like... Uh, there wasn't like, I think the only thing that might, well, it's, it was still definitely the nicest course I've ever played. Um, the scenery in Idaho was probably a little bit cooler, really, but just cause that was in the mountains, you know, this right. was like cutting some really cool bluffs and along a river. Um, but the course itself was absolutely gorgeous. Uh, people were super nice. Our group was phenomenal. Uh, we kicked the living shit out of Miles' team. Yeah, we went ten under through eighteen. That's yeah. awesome. And we yep. missed and we missed a bunch of six foot putts. Nobody could putt. Really? really? N- not one person could putt, and we would have been fifteen under if we could putt. Right. <sighs> we we were joking that if we were within ten feet, we weren't gonna make the putt because we would sink all of the long like forty footers because you get four chances at it, someone would sink it. Yeah. Um, and then we couldn't make the ones that were easily makeable with four people. The clutch just wasn't there. No. We were like reverse clutch yeah the hard ones is what everyone that would hit yeah i think it was because you think about it less because yeah. like i'm just trying to get it close 100 percent. but yeah. also like there's no way there, there's no way we could lose that that match we're mm-hmm. the we're the breakfast ball guys we, we can't we can't we literally uh, for the brand we can't lose i also cheated to get you on my team i know you did can you explain <laughs> that for me real quick so we did team survivor rules right so in survivor when they're picking new teams they there's two tribes or whatever and let's say you and I are on opposite tribes. First, I have to, I pick first. I'm a, I have to pick somebody from a different tribe, right? They come onto my team. And then when it comes back around, the person I just picked has to pick somebody from a different tribe. So you're forced to have even numbers of people from these two different teams. Um, the guy I picked first, because I had first pick overall, I purposely picked a guy that wasn't there yet because I knew if he wasn't there, he wasn't going to have be able to pick from our team. So I could just pick you back to back. Cause he wasn't there to make a choice. Yeah. So, and it and turns it, out he was good. So we lucked yeah. out with not, I didn't no idea. Uh, he was good. And of I, course miles was taken first off the board, which like I couldn't have been any more excited about because oh, yeah. I, I, I needed to play with you and the other guys mm-hmm. just for both of our sanities. Yeah. I think we were, we didn't have a single bad guy on our team. No, we all played our part. Um, cause I gave you guys all green lights. I made a couple big putts. I made an Eagle putt. Yep. Um, yep. none of us really chipped that great though. No. Like considering how well we drove. Which is probably why we couldn't putt either. Yeah. Um, I will say there's always one downfall to a round. The only downfall to this one, Tyler, it was fucking 100 oh, degrees. We were playing in an oven. 90% humidity. I think I drank like a liter and a half of water and probably four or five beers. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't piss one time. No, dude. And we drank the whole night before too. So yeah. it wasn't like we were ready to go hydrated in the morning. That's yep. wild. That's how you know you're dehydrated. <laughs> Dude, oh yeah, it <laughs> was like just slamming beers. Like it was, it was cooler to sit in the cart, even if the cart was in the sun, because the ground itself was radiating heat. Seriously? Yes. Oh yeah. Like You'd, the grass? Like it was. Oh, the yeah. heat was coming up from the ground, and the breeze was kind of warm. Weird. The only time to legitimately cool off was to either dump water on yourself or drive really fast on the cart. Jesus. Yeah. We got to go to more courses like that. Yeah, that, it was it was a sweet course. I would 100% go there again, and it would take zero seconds for me to decide that. And what what we were down there for, we were down there for the Bush Bash. Yep. So me, Miles, Tyler, Lakin, we all headed down there. Um, Missouri Eagle Distributor, mm-hmm. they, they bring us down. They kind of lay out the red carpet for us, which is fucking awesome. And they're all great people, too. All great people. They all hang out within their own group, and then they all get together when guys like us come down to hang mm-hmm. out for the weekend. So it's it's just one big get-together, one big party. Um, so I invited Nolan, who was on our team, to come ice fishing with us. So they take us golf, and we take them ice fishing. So they'll come, they're coming up to visit this winter. <sighs> we'll see if that actually happens. I invited them. 
There's winter in North Dakota. Nolan, if you don't show up here and suffer through the negative 30 on the ice with us. Yeah, winter here is We tough. suffered through 115 degrees with you. True. Suffered. We had a blast. Yeah. Um, but it's a horse of peace. You got to come visit us now. Yeah. And, uh, well, part of the Bush Bash was, uh, you know, the double cornhole boys, I guess is what oh, you could call us next. Oh, fuck, dude. Ten thousand dollars on the line, cornhole tournament. We signed up for it, and we're like ten grand to win, five grand for the winner. So ten, ten, ten grand, grand in total prizes. Dang. Yeah. So we signed up. It's uh, we signed up literally the night before. We just got a wild hair up our ass, and mm -hmm. we're like, all right, we'll go fifty bucks a piece. Sign up for a hundred, and we weren't gonna sign up because we're. I would say about uh, there was ninety one teams that showed up. I would say at least forty five of them were a professional in some capacity. They were an actual sponsored professional corno player. So we weren't going to sign up. Then we got drunk the night before and signed up. Yep. Um, and we're going to dive into this whole scenario <laughs> after this break. It is an unbelievable story. Um, so, yeah, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with uh, uh, disastrous of an I, event. I mean, we were 500. <laughs> True. All right. Be right back. <sighs> All right, Tyler. All right, right. We put our money where our mouth was. Yeah. We sure did, and we we had we we ate our pride. We had to eat. oh, we did, we did. So, at the Bush <sighs> Bash, Lake of the Ozarks, Lazy Gators, great time by the way. It was fun as hell. Um, big time cornhole tournament, and when I say big time, I'm talking like again, 91 teams, mm -hmm. 100 bucks a pop, free bush light getting passed around, yep. free merch getting passed around. There's people coming from everywhere. There were actual, like, so there was a ton of professionals there wearing their professional jerseys, but there were actual cornhole teams there. Like, there were teams that were yes. all wearing the same jerseys that had multiple teams. A, B, and C squad. Yeah, they had they had multiple squads with the same branding that were part of the same cornhole collective. Yeah. That's so crazy to me. It was bananas. I but, didn't, uh, I mean, I knew, I knew people wore jerseys for cornhole, but I didn't know they would wear that, like... It's it, there's just two players, right? right. Is it? It must. It's got to be like pure camaraderie. Plus, it's an opportunity to put sponsors on there. Right, but I've never looked at a Cornell jersey, saw the sponsor, be like, "Yep, I think I'll buy that." One thousand percent. Uh, unless it says Brio, then if, if it says Brio, I'm like, <laughs> hmm, I better get one of those. Yeah, Brio.co. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when these jerseys started to roll in, I'm like, we we have no place here. We have absolutely no reason to be here right now playing yeah. in this tournament. And here's how things unfolded for us. So it was kind of fun that you and I got up a little bit like earlier than everyone else. We kind of headed down there. We mm -hmm. saw like the whole setup and what was going on. People started showing up and we're like, holy shit, this is, this is going to be interesting. But hey, we're probably going to get one W under our belts mm -hmm. and then we might, we might get knocked. No, down. I was full, fully in my head. Like we're going to place. So I was very let down. <laughs> they, well, and here's what happened. They start calling teams to start playing. And we're like, all right, we're waiting for breakfast ball. Get called. Doesn't get called. We're like, okay, well, maybe we just didn't sign up. So we go to the table. They're like, oh, you guys got a first round buy. We're like, hell yeah. Number two seed. I mean, I, I figure why wouldn't they give us a first round buy? Yeah, obviously. And then the second round rolls around. And we're like, okay, finally we can throw a bag. Mm -hmm. And they call our name. We roll up, and I can't even remember the team we we're supposed Steven to Stephen Channing. Stephen Channing, F um, you, because we waited there for 10 minutes, and you didn't show up. And they forfeited. And they forfeited. So here we are, the breakfast ball boys, 2-0 and in the cornhole tournament. We're like, we're we're two rounds away from the quarterfinals without throwing a single bag. They didn't throw a single bag. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking like, fuck. Yeah. The first actual team we played are going to play has actually won two games <laughs> because now we're we're in the winner's bracket we're two stages ahead yes and people are already falling down into the loser's bracket because it's true double elimination and so they're playing all those games so then we had to wait extra long for our third so we threw up at showed up at 10 30 probably didn't play till 1 30 yeah oh yeah oh, at least so you're a little rusty compared to these guys too big time and but they call our name again <laughs> and oh. then uh, <laughs> get up there the guy I'm playing against has a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, there's no way we're winning this game. The guy, <laughs> so Ryan's guy wasn't wearing a jersey. My guy was wearing a jersey. He had long <laughs> buckle style jeans on. With Mind like, you, it's 95 degrees out. 95 degrees and we're playing on turf. 
and he's got rattlesnake cowboy boots with the toes, the tips of the toes worn out. <laughs> yeah. And he's got his jersey on and these fucking weird goggle looking ass glasses almost. And my joke all day was, is that I was going to tell pros that they were stepping over the line just to get in their head. And so he throws his first bag. I was like, I think your toe is just a little bit over the line. And he just looks at me. No, it wasn't. Oh, God. And I was like, well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> And then the next throw, I was like, are you sure cowboy boots are even legal? Like, can you play cornhole? And he's like, yes, you can. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And then he proceeded. What was the final, uh, the final score, Ryan? Because it was a race to 21. You could go over and bust. So that was okay. 28 to 0. Oh, I thought it was 21 to 0. No, because they went oh, over. Oh, because they went over. Because they went way over because they, they had to. Or they didn't they, didn't, they couldn't, didn't have to get exactly 21. Well, and, and here's when we knew that things were going to go south. You usually do a back and forth, just quick practice round. Yeah. Tyler's guy sunk all four immediately. Oh, my guy was on the practice. On the mm-hmm. practice round. My guy was three for four. Um, and I'm like, this is just, this is going to go Ugh. south very fast. Well, and they only, and they did it in three rounds. They beat us in three rounds. We didn't score a single fucking what? point. In three rounds, they scored 28 points to our zero. Did he have the cigarette in his mouth, the bags in my one guy hand, did. and then throw yeah. them with the other hand? Yes. Yeah. And he was blowing the smoke right in my face. <laughs> That's what we should have done. We should have been ripping darts. It's an intimidation factor. As if like they couldn't have had bigger swinging dicks before that. Oh, oh also, may God. I add this? They didn't make one facial expression the whole no, entire game. Not a single one. And then like he, it was 20 to zero after you threw your third round with that guy. Yep. And it, the bags come back to me. I, know, I made the jokes like, well, I probably shouldn't let you score on this one, huh? And he's like, yep. <laughs> and, without right. laughing and like that was laughing. an obvious joke of me making fun of myself that we were getting our asses absolutely kicked right yeah. and he's just like yep oh also may i add this um so on my side was there was like a kind of like that wooden style high top chair in front of here it was like a scoreboard so there's like a like a clip that you keep going up whatever the score is yep I didn't even know that existed until our yeah. second game. Oh, they're because pretty we, standard at big tournaments. But I, the reason I didn't know it existed because we didn't score one fucking time. <laughs> oh, you're True. saying while it was there, you didn't notice yeah. it. No, <laughs> no, because I didn't have to move it one time. Oh, I thought you were saying you'd never seen those before. I'm like, yeah, I've seen them both quite a and few the, places. And the three rounds I threw against that guy, he made every single bag in except one. And the one bag he missed is because I had a blocker in front of it and he tried to dunk it and barely, barely missed. It was... It was it still was on the next board. level shit. Yep. And we had the biggest cheering section event ever. Easily. Anybody. So it looked even worse. There was 10 people watching with. us. Yeah. yeah cheering you on. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Because yeah. two of the guys we golfed with were also at a team. So we went out, watched all theirs. They watched all ours. And then Miles and that crew all yeah. also came and watched our games. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. And then Miles, you know, attracts a crowd wherever he goes. Oh, yeah. So then he had random fans and Miles was chirping us and stuff. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we couldn't have been on and off those boards faster. In that uh, first game. I want to probably say we were on counting the practice round for probably like four minutes. I was going to say less than five for sure. <laughs> four. Seriously. Oh yeah. God. From yeah. Beginning to end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. It was yeah. embarrassing. Cody. It's unbelievable. Well, but I mean, okay. So there is guys that travel around just tournament to tournament. Yeah. Just yeah. doing cornhole. There was a team there. It wasn't the team we played, but they were from North Carolina. They flew in to play in this tournament. Unbelievable. And like, uh, you need to place top five just to get your flight ticket back. Some dude, his last name was wow. Cox. He won like worlds or some shit. And he showed up with like this little curly mustache and like this brand, super branded jersey. And I was watching him practice and it was, he was like talking to his friend. And just throwing all four and not even looking. Oh my god! There was another guy in a, in a Luka Doncic jersey, mm-hmm. and he had like an ankle brace on. And he had like gauges in his ears. He had the jersey with no undershirt on, <laughs> and he was playing with probably like a 16, 17, 18 year old girl. They were unbelievable. Yeah, they played right next to the guys that we we're our friends. They were playing right next to our friends. Yeah, I want to say that. They may have won it. We got to figure out who won because it, it won't make me feel as bad if the guys that beat us first round had won the whole thing. Right. I bet you they placed. I don't know if they, they probably did. There were some teams where it was unbelievable what they could do with the beanbag. Yeah. Um, so then we were on the second round. We're playing Team UA. Under and Armour. what that stands for is Team Under Armour. 
like Under Armour, the company sent a team to play in this tournament. No, they, uh, were, they definitely weren't are sponsored. They, they, were, they were two old guys, and we don't know 100% for sure if they were sponsored by Under Armour or not, but literally every piece of clothing they had on, from shoes to socks to shorts to shirts to hats, was Under Armour branded, and it Seriously. was matching. Yeah. They both had the exact same things on. They just had a bunch of Kohl's cash saved up and <laughs> must have splurged yeah. on TJ Maxx just got like, there the restock day. It would be cute if we matched. Yeah. <laughs> God. But it was the exact same outfit, right? And we actually probably could have beat those guys. No, I, I genuinely believe if if like if we would have played a little bit better, we could have beat them. Because like we they took a huge lead on us early. 18 nothing. Uh practice round, practice round, I threw all four in and I was like, I'm fucking dialed. Good to go. <laughs> First round, I had one on the board. That's how it usually goes yeah. for me. Yeah. Practice, I'm lights out. The game comes, and then it's like every other thing that could go wrong with my swing. Yeah. Is wrong. And then they scored 18 unanswered, and then we scored 10 unanswered, and then yep. they put us away. Yeah, that sucked. Yep. I was pretty disappointed. It was fun though. And then we proceeded to go to a bar later mm-hmm. and there's cornhole boards at this bar with regular people with regular people for no Tyler. Yeah. We, we, re- we are undefeated. We are the best regular people cornhole players. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. if you're not a professional and you want to play as cornhole, we will, we'll beat we'll, you. We'll beat you. Yep. We'll put a hundred bucks on the game. Mm-hmm. Speaking of a hundred bucks, Tyler, I don't know where this is going. <laughs> we never do. Cause this is what miles does. Um, Let's do one more segment. Let's do like a uh, pine to palm lead up okay. of like what training this week is going to look like for me. Um, yeah, we'll do that when we get back from the break. Okay. I got to get my shit figured out. <laughs> All right, Tyler. We are, we are less than one week out. I was singing the Rocky theme song, Flying High Now, because you are Rocky Balboa in the pine to palm. You are the Philadelphia underdog who trains in the meat market, getting ready to drop absolute fatty daddy piss meals going at least 300. I, if I can, if, if the driver's on, it may be game over for the yeah. other guy. Oh, uh, you're in the wrong flight. You should be in the higher one if you're going to hit your drive straight. Here's the <sighs> real question. Were you using the three wood? Down in used it once and absolutely time. fucking duffed it really? and i was like okay put it away put it- <laughs> <laughs> that's what you went from last week saying that's the only thing you can use i didn't see it in person yet <laughs> i have to use a four iron if you- you'd bring me the fucking three iron that i'm asking for uh dude we can use the adjustable club that grandpa dave gave the super us. stick there we go yeah um yeah i'm gonna have to use a four iron on those short par fours mm-hmm. which is gonna be tough dude i should just let you swing my that fucking rescue club i keep telling you i'm gonna bring you yeah, I know. I you got to text me in the morning. Well, if you would be a good caddy, you'd remember. Just text me in the morning. <laughs> what does the training regimen look for you leading up to the Pine to Palm, Ryan? All right, Are you so, doing anything differently as far as technique goes or diet? Well, he, ooh, no, here's no. the thing. Don't change anything. You were, we got a drink on a boat the night before <laughs> and we'll be way better. Here's the thing. I got lessons on Wednesday. Okay. That is the worst thing. No. You should have done lessons a long time. You don't have time to implement these. It's just going to fuck with you. I have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to implement them. Mm-hmm. If I want to implement them at all. Mm-hmm. All, but- I wanna, all I want to do is hit the ball straighter more often. And if that's two shots around that I hit the ball straighter, great. But what that's if fine. these? What if this advice fucks with your head? It's not going to. It might. No. Because, Tyler, do you know how many golf tips I've watched on TikTok that I've tried to <laughs> fuck with my head but haven't? No. A lot. Okay. A lot. Also, I'm going to need you to keep your backpack strap on your bag for this caddying thing. Yeah, it's on. Okay. Just how don't drop my gloves. How many shots of espresso is going to be going down the gullet before not, you head out there? Not Only espresso. Two. It's going to be, um, he's going to have like six, five hour energies. No, I'll drink. I'll drink. Uh, okay. So let, let's back up here for a second. Lessons Wednesday. Okay. I'm going to hit the range after work today. Yep. So range today, lessons Wednesday. I'm playing in a, another four man scramble on Thursday. Mm-hmm. So that'd be a nice. good that'd be a good like precursor to to Monday. I'm going to try and get one more round in. I might go to a par 3 and I hit, like that. and hit my irons this weekend. Mm-hmm. And then Monday shows up, right? 1 p.m. 1:15 tea time. I'm starting a hole 10. So I'm playing the back 9 first, which I have not played the back nine this year at Pine to Palm yet. I've played the front, but I haven't played the back. We're going into this blind. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's, I mean, why wouldn't, why <laughs> reminds wouldn't, me why like, what should we... I use? You're like, I don't know how far we are. <laughs> I, yeah, also, I never played here. Last time I went to the range, I did, uh, I did uh, get all my yardages for my clubs. I'm going to need that in the shop book. So I'll send that to you. We also need a shop book. 
Okay. Can you not use any electronic assisted? I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. So that's your, I'm going to leave that one up to you. I'm just going to hit the ball. Okay. Um, That'd be worth looking through the rule book. Cause if you could have 18 birdies pulled up, here's the thing. I don't get the ru- official rules until I register, which okay. I f- I've ar- I've signed up. Yep, I have a tee time, but I don't. Well, I don't know if you register Monday morning or what. I don't know when registration is. You should probably call someone. Well, I emailed him and he just didn't give me an answer. So, hmm. um, I'll, <laughs> they're ghosting you. I'll ask him again. But you get the official rules at registration Monday morning. Wake up, take two shots of espresso. That's normal for me. And then probably on the way there. Or right beforehand, I'll drink half a five hour. Okay. But you need to make sure I don't drink the full thing. How am okay. I going to pinch it off or what? No, so you need to just <laughs> dump it into a little shot glass and I'll take it. And then you keep the you keep the other half. I'm not bringing okay. you a shot glass. Okay. And then I'm going to save the other half for the second nine. I'm bringing okay. a bottle of peppermint schnapps. Because if I drink too much caffeine, then I will be just really jittery. Yeah. And I'll be like really like on edge kind of. Tense, yeah. Really tense, right. yeah. Right, you don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. I want to I want to find the sweet spot with caffeine. Like we would find the sweet spot with yes. drinking beers on the course. First thing I'm going to do is tell your opponent that their toe was over the line. Okay, or they were, they hit uh, in front of the tee box. Mm-hmm. Two stroke penalty. In front of the tees, DQ. Yeah. Oh, what'd you ask? You asked what club I was using? Sir, Marshall... He's asking what club I'm using. <laughs> I'll be the rat. Okay. You play classy golf. I'll be the yeah. rat. It'll be it'll be like how you know when when your buddy hits a shot into another group, the other one says four. Yeah. Like that kind of scenario. Yep. You notice something? Just tell Tyler. He'll tattle on the other. Okay. Because yep. it's not my fault. Yep. Um, and then, so here's how things are gonna go. The first couple holes, the first shot of the day is gonna determine a lot. Cause can't take a breakfast ball, right? True. So the first shot's going to determine a lot. The fr- I, I'm a, I'm guessing the first couple holes is going to be very, very like a little bit tense, like we talked about with overdose caffeine. Mm-hmm. But then I'll start to settle in a little bit. I'll, I'll like the nerves will when I figure out the the um, talent level of my opponent mm-hmm. will determine how I approach. Like let's just say holes three through the rest of the eighteen. Now, when I signed up, I was a 13 handicap, and I am now single digit handicap. Good, that would scare him. So that this guy is fucked, without a doubt. He I'm is, not worried about him one bit. I'm Here's not what even, I am. But it'll about. be so. What if there's there's a listener? What if there's a listener right now that's playing pine to palm, and we get paired up with them? Oh, we're gonna absolutely fucking destroy him. Sorry. Welcome to the podcast. We're gonna <laughs> fucking crush you. <laughs> we're we're gonna lose one listener, but that's okay. God, you know what? I, no. I really gonna, wish that wasn't the same day as the golf tournament for here because I really wanted to be there with like, you know, full crowd mode, camera ready to go. No, uh, you'll be there for the finals. So that's my next True. question. So True. Monday is a qualifier. I don't know. So the way I see it is I could potentially lose, but still qualify if I sh- if we both shoot great scores. Mm-hmm. Um, this could potentially be a week off from work. Yeah. We'd have to go every day. <laughs> Great for content though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> here's my next question. Miles how are we gonna? Me. How are we gonna document this? Um, I don't know. We need someone in the crowd to shoot stuff. <laughs> Weird. Almost like we have a guy that I thought you were documents. playing in so that. You had to play in the. Yeah. Oh, this is scramble. Monday. You're saying. Yeah. Shoot. Okay. I was thinking after the qualifying. No. So what we're after gonna have? Well, after I'm qualifying, in. we'd be good. We'd be. We'd be all right. Yeah. So just for qualifying, what we're gonna have to do is we'll do a pre, a pre front nine. Technically back nine, pre front nine video. Yep. Post front nine video. And then after the 18. We'll put it on the up on the story probably. We will, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll. if you're not following the Instagram, follow the Instagram. This is how you're going to get the updates. Breakfast.ball. Can you smoke cigs on the course? I don't know. Because the guy who beat us in Cornhole was smoking cigs and he was draining <laughs> balls or draining bags. Jade was smoking swishers in that one scramble and he was hitting bombs. Yeah, but that wasn't sanctioned. This is like True. an actual tournament. <laughs> So we got to find out in the rules book if you can smoke cigs on the course. <laughs> Doesn't Arnold Palmer chief cigars up on the on the course? Or Who's going to tell Arnold Palmer what to do? True. No one. True. Okay. Prediction time. My prediction through 18 is 13 over. Really? Yep. I'd be happy with that. That'd be great. 13 over is my prediction. Okay. What's your prediction, Tyler? You're going to shoot even. It's been done before. Mm-hmm. I have done that before. You're going to shoot even. If if I pull the best round of my life out of my ass, you're going to get the number one. No one will beat me. I could see it. Especially in the group that I'm in. 
It this, just sucks. This, type this of is pressure. a multiple day tournament. No, it doesn't. This is phenomenal. I know, but we're going to miss so much work because we're going to keep <laughs> winning. But we're going to get so much content out of it. True. So we are working. Yeah. <sighs> Perfect. I'm getting nervous just talking about it. <laughs> I got to get to the range. This type of pressure is good pressure though, Ryan. What's Here, your prediction? I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to say five. Five over? Yeah. Fuck, if I can hit five over. I'm going to say five over. Done deal. I think very realistic. So you're, you played sports in college. You're used to this kind of pressure. You're good to go. You're good to go. Um, I could probably cheat if 18 birdies isn't a thing. I can get on my watch. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. No, we can't do that. We can't do that, Tyler. <laughs> you, you know, honestly, we don't want to cheat to win. We want to yeah, win. Exactly. Fair and square. Here's hey, the it's thing, not cheating Tyler. if you don't know if I'm looking at my book, aka my watch. Tyler, here's the thing: if the driver's on, we don't even we, we look at the we look at the T box marker. We see our distance from the from the T box. Yep. If the driver's on, wedge is hundred in. Yeah, it's gonna be easy for me. I was like, here's your driver, here's your wedge, yep. here's your putter. Yeah. Yep. So the driver needs to be on, and I think I have it figured out. Yeah. Okay. I think I have it figured out after after last week. Um, oh, yeah. This is gonna be this is gonna be a blast. So here's the biggest and probably the most important question: What are we gonna wear? We gotta look pretty sharp. <laughs> we have to match. Yeah, we do. Do we go alternating though? Because we just bought a bunch of the same polos in different colors. Do we alternate, or do we both wear the same color? You got to wear the same color. And what I would, what I would suggest, you should do it like real caddy, like get, get Ryan's last name on your shirt on the back. Maybe. Well, if I'm going real caddy, I got to wear a jumpsuit, <laughs> white jumpsuit. That would be so funny. Like, like a Tyvek a, suit, like a painter suit. I yeah. have a Tyvek suit from uh coyote hunting. <laughs> I'd wear it. I'm going to die. Be so I oh God, you would die. <laughs> it's like, it'd be like back in your wrestling days wearing a sweatsuit. I haven't walked 18 holes, let alone carried my bags walking nine Ever. That's also another thing. I haven't walked 18 holes in a while. Fatigue is going to set in. I was going to say, make sure you carry granola bars, whatever you need in your bag. They say to snack the entire time. Got to keep the snack calories the up. time. Bryson does say that. So we need Gotta water. We mm -hmm. need granola cigs. bars. Water, cigs, and granola bars. And we need a half of a five hour. Because mm -hmm. the other half will be gone before we You're start. You're good to go. You're good to go. Hey, also, what balls are we going to hit? Uh, whatever <laughs> ones you want. Noodles. Because they need to be the same ball. <laughs> yeah, you got to get like 10 of them. I might just say Pro V1s because I do have they, a box. Okay. Is that a real thing? I don't. They're not going to go through your bag and check what balls you're hitting. They might because then... That, I don't think that's a real thing. That's how they... Uh, like people search... Because I think if I lose a ball, then there's something wrong. Because there's people... There's like officials that see mm -hmm. balls land. Right. So we shouldn't be losing balls. But that I'm pretty sure that's how they... They just make probably make sure that you're not using the same ball as the other guy. Okay. I'm sure they, they just, you just say when you're teeing off because that's how you do it, at least in, in high school tournaments. That's I how think it was. You, you just I say what you're playing and then that's what you're playing for that hole. I think you should will, use Wilson Pro Staffs. That's what you were crushing. I am digging the Wilson Pro Staffs. I'll tell you what. Not a bad move. Also, some, some guy sent an email into us. His name's Matthew. He said he was going to send me a Kirkland putter. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, really? but we need that thing ASAP because I need to practice with it. Yeah. If, if he's going to send it, I, I don't expect any, to get anything in the mail, but <laughs> if he is going to send Matthew, if you're going to send it, uh, I did send him the address. Hey, so a question. Well, we need to get Maddie on. We're going to try and get Maddie Poole from the Caddy Girls on this Friday. We'll, record, we'll release the episode with her if we can get her on next week. So it'll actually be after the round, but yeah. it'll, the interview will be before the round. Yeah. Um, to try and like teach me some of the intricacies of caddying because I don't know if I can... Do I bring your clubs onto the green? Do I set them on the fringe? I think That's we need to watch point. some videos. Yeah. See how yeah. The pros I'm, do it. I'm assuming they do not bring them on the green. No, I don't think you can bring, them on, bring the green. them on the green. Where do I set them then? On the cart path? Do I set them In on the, the rough, fringe? Right, right offside the fringe. Okay. In the rough. <laughs> but like, what if homie, the other guy, chips over the green and the bag's in the way? Well, move the bag. He can't be in his line. We'll, we'll be out of... We'll, we won't be like directly behind. I'm going to stand with them more than I do with you. I'm fucking chirping all day. <laughs> you know what? Over and the weekend, I played a course that was not on 18 birdies. Which one? The mountain course. It was a, a really nice 18 hole course here in town. Could be new. What? Um, there's, there's a nice volcano. In town? Yeah, there's a nice volcano. Oh, with shut water, off. With water. This guy. Of it. And... <laughs> Uh, the obstacles were just unbelievable. 
He had me. He legit had me. <laughs> me too. It was a fucking mini golf course. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on 18 birdies, and I'm a little bit offended. Is there an 18 birdies for mini golf? There's got to be. There has to be. If not... 18 putts. So now out there, here's another million 18, dollar idea. 18 aces. Yep. 18 aces. That's All good. right. We got to wrap this shit up, Ryan. <sighs> All right. We're six days out. Six days out, folks. We got we got some we still have some work to do. I mm-hmm. gotta dial the clubs in. You have to dial the rules in. <laughs> You're gonna be my rule guy. I, I don't want to think about the rules. I just want to think about hitting the ball. This is gonna be a good time, Tyler. There'll be a wait. rules official out there too to ask questions. Yeah. Too. How long? And we also need to make sure we know when we can take a club length and when we can't. Yeah, that's what the rules official is for. Okay, but if if he, the rules official isn't there to see it, then we need to bring him over and say, hey, we get a club length because it's a man-made object. Yeah, and it's also, too, in these types of match plays, they they can give you gimmies and stuff like the, your opponent. So if your opponent's like, yeah, you can move that ball, you can. The biggest thing I'm going to struggle with is, well, marking my ball, lining my putt up, with the ball marker, I'm still supposed there. to be the one that marks your ball. Okay, be careful with that. The verbal gimme that's a dangerous game. I'm not giving any gimmies. This guy's gonna putt everything out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying for the like the mulligans, if he says, Yeah, that's fine, pick it up, and then later on is like, Hey, he picked up that whatever, you know. No, right. it's rule, it's like in the rules for match play. Like that you if can they, ask, you, you can the dude, the, your opponent can give you a gimme. Are you so, sure? Yeah. So like if you're, if they're going to lose the hole regardless, they'll just give you the putt. Okay. All right. I've oh, never heard God. of that. I'm serious. We There's a see. kid from my hometown that won the big, the main, the number one fleet one year. Yeah. He's very good. Um, that's what happened on the final hole. They made it to Dang. a playoff and the other guy had lost already. And he's, he's like, like, you got it, dude. Take it. Yep. Dang. I would need to sink that final putt. Yeah. But if you miss it, yeah, then, then you, you don't win anymore. Stroke. Well, if you're only one stroke down, you got to make him put that out. Yeah. If you're three strokes down, then I get it. Yeah, I don't know what the the instance was, but <laughs> we got to stop talking about this. The pride. Yep. All I'm right. Lock myself in my office. Find a problem. Six days. Buy some hats. Oyabetcha.com. Go to the breakfast ball link. The hats are dope. We're not wearing them, but they are dope. I promise. Um, Rio, thank you for presenting us. We really do appreciate it. Love you. Love you guys. Well, that's a breakfast ball.